Okay, here's a re-record of this uh, IK Chains workflow, uh, starting from simple, working to a more complete one. Uh, so here's a skeleton, uh, you know, skeleton. Um, so to make this work with IK Chains, uh, basically all you need is uh, some IK handles to target. So in this case, the obvious IK handle would be the ankles. So what we can do is we can just, uh, we split this off to be their own points. Uh, we can pose those with whatever method we want. I'm using a rig pose here. It doesn't really matter. It could be a transform sop. Um, so now with those positioned where they're, where they're positioned, um, you can feed that to an IK chain. So the IK chains takes the skeleton as the first input, the IK handles for the second input. And on the IK chain sop itself, uh, you set up tabs to represent each, each IK chain. So here I've set you know, the root, middle, and tip for the IK chain. Turn to match my name, and most importantly, make sure blend is turned on. So the default is blend zero, so it's, it's actually having no effect. But with that turned on, it means that now, uh, as long as I am displaying the IK chain, so that's got the blue, uh, the blue flag, and I can select the rig pose, and then in the viewport hit enter. So now I can see the handles and modify them. I'm just gonna hit T. So I can move the handles around, but I can see uh, the final result. So that works-ish. But you can see that uh, if I move the legs too far away, the knees flip around. That's because if you've used IK systems in other packages, you know that you need uh, a pole vector to tell the, the IK chain which, which, which plane to be uh, rotating itself in. So let's add that. So here, basically the same setup, but uh, this time I'm going to add a pole vector. Um, so the most obvious way to get at that would be to use the, the knee. Uh, now I'm just going to do something else for a sec. So I'm going to do it the way that you would assume to do it, which is uh, I split off to just grab uh, the ankle and the knee. But you can see that when I do it in this way, so if I go and select just those points, uh, the split by default keeps uh, that vertical line there. Seemingly shouldn't make a difference. I mean, it makes sense. It's just it's just it's taken a subsection out of the line. But uh, the problem here is that because uh, all of the KineFX nodes, especially the repose node, take into account connectivity between the joints, um, and if things are connected, then that sets up a parent-child relationship. So the problem here is that if I then try and pose that, um, if I move the feet, the feet are sort of you know do what they do, but if I move the knee. Because I drew this out from the hips down to the feet, the feet get dragged along with, with the knee, which is not really what we want. You know, for an IK system, normally you just want uh, the IK handles and the pole vector to be independent to a point, which we'll get to. The way to do that is to make sure that we don't have any sort of line connecting these two points. Easiest way is you go from the skeleton and you, and you can just uh, blast it back to points. Um, the old way is you put down an add sop with the uh, with uh, delete geometry, but keep all the points turned on. Um, that's really unintuitive and hard to remember. The easier way is uh, at some point they added a extract all points, which is in fact just an add sop with that thing turned on. But uh, it makes more sense when you see it in a flow. So extract all the points. Uh, isolate to just the points we want, which is the ankles and and the knees. So now when I pose. Uh, I can pose the, the ankles independently of the knees. Feed all that to the IK chains. So now because this has uh, knees, and again, to, to get this into a, a poseable state, I'm displaying the IK chains, but I'm selecting the rig pose and I'm, and I'm hitting enter. So now I can, I can pose the ankles and I can set the rotation for the knees. That's all good. But um, a common... Criticism with this workflow, even back in Maya, is animators often get frustrated where you've got to move the ankles, update the knee, move the ankle, update the knee. Oftentimes you want those to be kind of moving together. Um, so that's what this next setup is. Come with me. So here, same thing. So there's my skeleton. Extract all the points. Uh, split it to just uh, the ankles and the knees. But what we can do is we can take advantage of the trick that we saw before. Um, so we know that if there's a line connecting two points, the rig pose will treat them as a parent child and they'll be moved together. But what we can do is we can use the reparent SOP and we can and we can say, actually in this case, uh, parent the knee underneath the foot. So we're inversing uh, the order. 
Uh, what that means is once I use the rig pose, it means that I can, let me just clear this out. Uh, so if I move the, the foot, the knee moves, moves with it. Which means that when I feed that to the IK chain, the IK chain, so again, display that while editing the rig pose, it means that now I've got two controls in one because I can be just moving and rotating the foot. And because the, the knee is going to be sort of rotated with it, um, I can pose the angle of the IK of the IK plane. So this is kind of how most rigs work from memory. I haven't, I haven't animated Myron 8 in years, but um, I think this is kind of a common shortcut where you just want to shortcut, make a lazy way to pose both the, the knee and the foot together. So that's that. But if you're doing an IK setup, you often want to be you know, posing the foot, but then also posing the hips. Right now, we have no way to do that. Next setup. So here, this side chain is the same. So extract all the points, split out to just the ankles and the knees. Reparent them so it's reversed, so, so the ankle is the parent. Repose to that, and IK chain. So that's all the same. But what we can do is on this left flow, I take, take the skeleton and I just put its own uh, repose down where I just move the hips and nothing else. So I can now uh, move the hips, move that over there. So if this result is fed to the IK chains, the hips will stay where I put them and the feet will then adapt to where these handles are pointing. So in theory, this is doing everything we need. Uh, but the problem is now uh, you can see that in terms of the actual viewport interaction, it's kind of split where we have to be looking at this rig pose to pose the feet but then I have to move to this rig pose to pose the hips. And we also get this double up where uh, this rig pose is showing me the entire skeleton uh, and all the little kind of axis handles, which I don't want because uh, all I want is just the hips and nothing else. So this is this weird sort of you know, um, freaky double skeleton thing. That's no good. What we really want is just uh, for this manipulation -y sort of view, just the hips and the feet and the pole vectors. That's what this next setup is. So here, once again, skeleton, extract all the points. This time we split the ankles, the knees, and the hips, do the reparent dance so that the, the knees are now parents of the ankles. We can repose here. So this now has all the handles we want for both the feet and the hips. But then how do we split that out to where we need it to go? Because essentially we want to push the hips onto the skeleton before the IK handle, before the IK solver, and then the feet to the IK chains uh, sop. So we can do that by, by, by using a split. So if I split off uh, the hips, so now from the split, uh, the left side is the hips, the right side is the feet and ankles, uh, sorry, the ankles and the knees. Um, so with the, with the hips, we can push that transform onto the original skeleton using a skeleton blend. So this will just do its best that uh, whatever joints are being fed into it, if they have a name match, there'll be uh, it'll then copy those uh, those transforms on. So you can see here that I can use this blend slider to go from the original up to this, this blended this blended state. So that's the hips. Meanwhile, the uh, ankles and knees over here are being fed to the IK chain stop, and the input for this one is obviously the, the IK chains on, on this side. But the other side is is our modified um, skeleton with the moved hips. So now we get best of both worlds because we can be viewing this final node while we're manipulating this rig pose. And now we have exactly what we want, which is we can grab the hips and the ankles and rotate the the knees. Whoops, I should probably do that. Well, it's not so stretchy. Oh, T, there we are. Pull up there. Rotate. So now I can pose everything I want, uh, and it's happy days. Whoops, translate, there we are. So yeah, so that's kind of the basics of how the uh, IK chains works, and as well as getting a nice uh, visual way to manipulate all the sort of important controls.